robotic revolution, fusion energy breakthroughs, China's artificial sun. What happened in the nuclear world this month? Welcome back to All Things Nuclear with Diana. It's the end of January 2025 and I've prepared an exciting lineup of groundbreaking nuclear energy updates from around the globe. But before we start, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. This way you won't miss any of the latest developments and professional insights shaping the future of clean energy. First, let's talk about South Korea's robotic revolution in nuclear decommissioning, the Armstrong robot, a groundbreaking innovation developed by the Korea Atomic Energy Research Institute in partnership with Victex. This state-of-the-art machine is engineered for versatility and resilience, making it a game-changer in nuclear decommissioning. The key features of the Armstrong robot include caterpillar trucks, which are designed to traverse rough and uneven terrain, ensuring mobility in various challenging environments. Then, advanced manipulation capabilities. Sophisticated tools allow the robot to perform intricate tasks, such as handling hazardous materials with precision. And remote operation technology. Human operators can safely control the robot from a secure location, significantly reducing risks. So how has it been used? First, emergency response. It provides rapid deployment capabilities in nuclear incident scenarios, ensuring timely action without endangering human operators. Then, decommissioning processes. Equipped with robotic manipulators, it can efficiently perform decommissioning tasks, surpassing traditional methods in both safety and speed. And hazardous area operations. Collaborations with organizations like Korea Expressway Corporation highlight its use in environments such as contaminated highway sites, places too dangerous for human intervention. The benefits of deploying such robotics are immense. They enhance safety by minimizing human exposure to radiation, offer long-term cost savings despite high initial investments, and deliver precision in compliance with stringent regulations. However, challenges remain, including high development costs, technical complexity, and navigating regulatory hurdles. Looking ahead, innovations in artificial intelligence and machine learning are expected to further enhance its capabilities, making it smarter and more adaptive. Moreover, integrating eco-friendly technologies into robotic systems could pave the way for a sustainable approach to decommissioning worldwide. South Korea is setting a powerful precedent, one that could inspire similar advancements globally. Next, fusion energy breakthroughs. In the world of fusion energy, there's been an exciting leap forward with groundbreaking achievements from different corners of the globe. Researchers from the University of Seville's Plasma Science and Fusion Technology Laboratory have achieved something extraordinary with their smart Takamak device. They successfully generated their first Takamak plasma, making a monumental step forward, harnessing sustainable and virtually limitless energy. So what makes SMART so unique? This spherical tokamak isn't just any experimental device. It's designed with incredible flexibility in shaping the plasma. SMART's cutting-edge approach focuses on something called negative tranquility, where the plasma shape looks like a mirrored D. So why does this matter? Because this shape suppresses instabilities that can expel particles and energy from the plasma, protecting the tokamak walls from damage and improving overall fusion performance. Plus, the design optimizes heat distribution, which is critical for building compact and efficient reactors. This achievement isn't just about technical success. It's about paving the way for future fusion power plants. The Plasma Science and Fusion Technology Lab is leading the charge in developing compact, efficient, and powerful fusion devices that could revolutionize our energy landscape. 
Then there is China's Artificial Sound Project, Experimental Advanced Superconducting Tokamak, or known as EAST, has also made headlines with record-breaking plasma duration of 1,066 seconds. To put this into perspective, the 1,066-second plasma duration is a significant leap toward commercial fusion, as it brings researchers closer to achieving the sustained reactions needed for a practical energy source. This accomplishment, managed by the Hefei Institutes of Physical Science under the Chinese Academy of Sciences, underscores the importance of advanced materials, improved cooling systems, and precise magnetic confinement in overcoming the challenges of heat and plasma stability. These breakthroughs collectively highlight the global momentum in fusion energy development, with each country's advancements contributing to realization of a sustainable, carbon-free power source. However, challenges remain. The immense heat generated by plasma, the cost of building and maintaining such facilities, and the need for even longer durations of stable reactions are hurdles that researchers are working to overcome. Despite these difficulties, achievements like those at SMART and EAST bring us closer to unlocking the transformative potential of fusion power. Moving on to China's nuclear sector. The Zhangzhou Unit 1 reactor began operation on January 1, 2025. This reactor, based on the Huolong 1 design, represents a major step forward in the scaled construction of China's third-generation nuclear technology. The Zhangzhou nuclear power base is planned to host six Huolong 1 units, each with a capacity of 1 million kilowatts, with four currently under construction. Developed by the China National Nuclear Corporation, the Huolong-1 technology is a landmark achievement, fully meeting the highest global safety standards and showcasing China's leadership in nuclear innovation. Zhangzhou Unit 1 alone is expected to generate more than 10 billion kilowatt hours of electricity annually, enough to meet the energy needs of 1 million people in moderately developed countries. This clean energy generation will reduce standard coal consumption by 3.12 million tons and cut carbon dioxide emissions by 8.16 million tons each year, equivalent to planting over 70 million trees. Once complete, the Zhangzhou nuclear power base will produce 63.5 billion kilowatt hours of electricity annually, playing a vital role in helping Fujian province achieve its carbon peak and neutrality targets. This milestone reflects China's expertise in delivering high-performance nuclear projects on schedule and demonstrate the scalability of modern nuclear technology. In maritime innovation, small modular reactors are being explored for ship propulsion under the new ProShip initiative. An extensive assessment of advanced reactor technologies have led to the selection of three promising designs for evaluation. One, Kairos Power, a fluoride high-temperature molten salt reactor using trice of fuel particles, known for robust and efficient operation. Next, UltraSafe, a helium-cooled gas reactor also employing trice of fuel particles, recognized for their resilience and safety in extreme conditions. And the third one is Baikala, a lead-cooled reactor concept utilizing uranium oxide as fuel, offering high efficiency with advanced cooling mechanism. Trice of fuel particles play a key role in two of these reactors, celebrated for their durability and containment properties, making them one of the most resilient nuclear fuel types available. By integrating SMRs into shipping, the industry could achieve unprecedented levels of fuel efficiency and emissions reaction, demonstrating the versatility of SMRs and their potential to redefine energy solutions across sectors. If you're hearing about SMRs for the first time, I recommend checking out my previous video where I explain what it is and why is it so cool. Now let's move on to Slovakia. 
Unit 4 of Slovakia's Mohovci nuclear power plant has entered cold hydro testing, a crucial phase that evaluates the integrity of the reactor's cooling systems and pressure boundaries. This process involves subjecting the reactor to simulated operational pressures and temperatures without nuclear fuel. Unit 3 of Mohovci, which has been producing electricity since 2023, has also undergone the same tests. Both Unit 3 and Unit 4 have an installed capacity of 471 megawatts and together will cover approximately 26 percent of Slovakia's electricity consumption. Compared to coal and gas power plants, Mohovce and PP Unit 3 and 4 will prevent the release of at least 5 million tons of CO2 emissions annually. The successful completion of this phase will confirm the readiness of Mohovce 4 for commissioning, reinforcing Slovakia's commitment to energy security and reliable power generation through nuclear advancements. Meanwhile, the U.S. is addressing data centers' energy demands with natrium reactors. Sabay Data Centers is exploring the deployment of natrium reactors to power its operations, leveraging the cutting-edge capabilities of this advanced nuclear technology. Terra Power, the developer of Natrium, broke ground on America's first advanced nuclear project in 2024, near a retiring coal facility in Wyoming. The Natrium technology features a 345-megawatt sodium-cooled fast reactor, paired with a molten salt-based energy storage system, which can boost output to 500 megawatt during peak demand. This flexibility makes it particularly well-suited for data centers, where energy reliability and adaptability are paramount. The collaboration between Sabi data centers and TerraPower includes plans to evaluate natrium plant deployments in the Rocky Mountain region and Texas, addressing the exponential growth in energy needs driven by AI and data center expansion. Natrium reactors are expected to play a critical role in meeting this demand with each plant capable of generating reliable, clean power to support the massive electricity consumption of modern digital infrastructure. On the policy front, the U.S. Treasury Department announced final rules for the Section 45V Clean Hydrogen Production Tax Credit, introducing significant updates to boost clean hydrogen production. Among the key changes in the inclusion of nuclear power as a qualifying energy source for electrolytic hydrogen production, provided it helps prevent the retirement of existing nuclear reactors. This allows nuclear energy to qualify for the $3 per kilogram tax credit, as long as life cycle greenhouse gas emissions remain below the statutory limit of 4 kg CO2 equivalent per kilogram of hydrogen produced. The move addresses industry concerns that limiting the credit to renewable sources could hinder the growth of the hydrogen sector. Notably, three of the seven hydrogen hubs awarded $7 billion in grants by the Department of Energy in 2023, already incorporate existing nuclear power, emphasizing its role in the sector's expansion. Additionally, the final rules implement a tired system for methane-based hydrogen production, linking credit values to life cycle GHG emissions. Hydrogen producers using carbon capture and storage or alternative sources like wastewater and landfill gas can qualify for up to $3 per kilogram, while coal mine methane-derived hydrogen receives lower credits. Another significant change is the delayed deadline for green hydrogen producers to meet hourly certification requirements, aligning with EU standards and extending the start date to 2030. This provides producers with more time to adjust to the stringent criteria. By incorporating nuclear energy into the tax credit framework, the U.S. positions itself as a leader in the global hydrogen market complementing its decarbonization efforts. However, uncertainty remains, as the incoming administration's stance on clean energy initiatives could impact the future of the burgeoning industry. But not everything is going well in the nuclear world. 
challenges remain for France's EPR2 program. It is under intense scrutiny as concerns about cost management, timeline adherence, and financing continue to mount. A recent report from France's Court of Auditors highlighted numerous uncertainties surrounding the program, including delays in design, unclear costs for the first three pairs of reactors, and the absence of detailed financing plan. These challenges have led to calls for withhold a final investment decision until funding is secured and detailed designs are finalized. The EPR2 program aims to construct six new reactors, with the first three pairs planned for the Penley, Grave Lines, and Boogie and PP sites. Originally estimated to cost 51.7 billion euros, the price tag has risen to 67.4 billion euros as of 2023. Construction is set to begin in 2027, but EDF's financial constraints and the need for state approval have cast doubt on the timeline. Delays could also arise from obtaining European Commission approval for state funding. The court's report also drew attention to lessons from Flamanville 3, an earlier EPR project plagued by technical issues and budget overruns, where costs soared from 3.3 billion euros to 22.6 billion euros. These setbacks underscore the risks inherent in large-scale nuclear projects. Despite these challenges, the EPR2 is designed as a simplified and more efficient evolution of its predecessors, incorporating feedback from projects in France, Finland, the UK, and China. Looking ahead, the EPR2 program's success will hinge on addressing these financial, technical, and regulatory challenges. The program remains critical to France's nuclear renaissance, as outlined by President Macron in 2022, aiming to secure energy independence and achieve Europeans' clean energy goals. However, the program's long-term viability will require clear profitability forecasts and stronger project management to ensure timely and cost-effective execution. Well, that's it on the nuclear news of January. From cutting-edge robotics to breakthroughs in fusion, nuclear technology is still driving progress worldwide. What stories caught your interest the most this month? Let me know in the comments below. Before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated with all things nuclear with Diana. Until next time, stay curious and stay nuclear.